Hello and welcome back to another Flora and the Novice Explorers video. In this video we are going to show you our gadgets that we use on a daily basis that help with our van life journey, keeping things easy and all of our batteries nicely topped up. Yeah these are some of the most helpful gadgets and gizmos we use on a daily basis. Down below hopefully you'll find a link where we've compiled everything together and more you can browse through there. They are affiliate links, so if you purchase anything, we do earn a small commission, but it doesn't cost you anything, so it helps support the channel. And I'm sure that you'll find something in there that you'll definitely find useful. So here are the things that we use almost every day that come in very handy, but are in no particular order. So the first gadget on our list are these. These are Anker portable battery banks. I think they're about 20,000 milliamp hours and they're extremely, extremely useful. They charge pretty much any USB device, which include charging our phones, camera batteries, they power our pretty fairy lights, and we've also got a fan which works off of them too. These will recharge our phones multiple times. Obviously, if we're making a video, the camera will go through quite a few batteries, but again, that's not a problem because I just charge them in the rucksack. It does take a while to charge these back up to being full, but we can charge them back up via our solar setup or through mains. They both have two USB outputs for charging, so you can charge two phones at a time, and just the one smaller input for the charging. I would say the only con of carrying these is they are quite weighty for their size. That's why we put them in the rucksack. Five out of five stars. And they come in this tidy little carry bag for protection. <laughs> Without this next item, we would be well and truly lost. No, I'm not kidding. We rely on this quite a lot. This is our sat nav. The exact model is the Garmin Camper 770. In terms of features, reliability, cost, everything, this was pretty much top of the food chain. We chose this model specifically because of its large touchscreen display. Because this is a camper specific model, it allows you to put in the height, weight uh, and other dimensions of your vehicle so it can take you on alternative routes or tell you that this route is not suitable for your vehicle. It allows you to change the settings to avoid motorways, toll roads and U-turns. And it does actually have a pretty decent internal battery if you don't have um, an available outlet for it, which is always handy. It comes with a pretty suave carry case, which we use to store it in when we're parked up. Um, and instead of just sticking it sucker to the screen, which we don't really like because often we find they fail, it's got this really nice weighted base. Yes, um, it's like a bean bag almost. <laughs> yeah. We were a bit skeptical when we first saw that, but I must admit, it doesn't budge. No. That being said, no sat-nav device is flawless 100% of the time. We have had a few issues with it in regards to uh, new roads, uh, road closures. But 99 times out of 10, this has saved us. 99 times out of 10? Yeah, a lot of times. <laughs> Our next useful gadget is this rechargeable batteries, double A to be precise. We use these for our microphones and our digital radio. These have been a great investment. They are super environmentally friendly and very economical. They're only just a little bit more expensive than a normal set of non-rechargeable batteries uh, and they last really well, don't they? Yeah. Surprisingly well. They will run our radio for hours and hours and hours and hours. They come with this charging unit. Now this can fit double A's and triple A's. However, they have to be recharged via the three pinned mains plug. So that brings us on to our next gadget. This is our Best Tech 300 watt pure sine wave inverter. Uh, because we did the electrics on the van ourselves, we were quite happy to do 12 volt, but we didn't want to install a permanent 240 volt system. So all we've got is this little inverter that plugs into a 12 volt outlet. This is primarily used to charge our laptop. It also charges our rechargeable batteries. Um, sometimes we charge our phones and batteries for our cameras off of it too. But as Meg said, primarily this is for the laptop. We don't choose to power the smaller devices because you lose power when going from 12 volt to this and it's just a bit of a waste of energy. So we try to be as efficient as possible. And with it being pure sine wave, it means that um, it can charge the delicate laptop without a problem. I was skeptical at first because this is one of the cheaper options I found and it's actually worked really well. And almost used every day. It's easy to stow away and it just works. So we're very happy with it. So this is one of our favourite items in the van, our favourite gadget, and it has also made its way into our videos too as a bit of a feature. We use this radio so much that it's actually made the built-in radio in Flora obsolete. We watch TV shows 
on the laptop and the audio can come through this via Bluetooth. We also listen to audiobooks, podcasts and music off of our phone and it has an AUX input too. So primarily it is a DAB digital radio and it's really good. The sound that this produces for its size is really quite impressive. It's got a really nice bass tone to it, hasn't it? The only negatives I think towards this, because it is so beautiful, we have to try and be careful with it. But that hasn't always been the case. No, it got dropped out of the uh, door back on the Isle of Skye way back when. It's still working. Yeah, it's still looking all right, but I, I dread the day when we actually do properly give it a good dink or like it starts coming away. Touch wood, that won't happen. And you can power it by a normal three pin UK plug or as we mentioned earlier, with chargeable batteries. And this lasts for, it seems like forever yeah. on a set of- uh, So more than 10 hours or less than 10 hours? Cause I'm not really sure. It's, it's something around that. Either way, it's quite impressive and it means it's mobile. We can move it around the van, take it outside the van. Beautiful little bit of kit in it. Yeah, our favorite and we love it. So as we mentioned earlier in the video, we didn't want to install 240 volts into our self-built campers because we didn't want to kill ourselves. So we got this. We bought this from Go Outdoors for around 25 quid. But the one linked down below is something slightly different, but pretty much the same quality piece of kit. So this device here gives us access to 240 volts when we're on a campsite. Which is handy when like there's not much solar or our batteries are low, we want to give them a rest and we want to do a lot of work on the laptop then uh, this does come in handy. We rely on this now and again, but not too much because we don't have a lot of 240 volt uh, devices in there we can get by. Yeah, I think this is used maybe three, maybe four times a month max. So we haven't had any problems with this yet. Um, this is pretty much universally welcomed in Europe. We haven't had, oh, we had one issue actually, didn't we? Yes. Uh, but um, as we head further south, we may encounter a few more. So what we need is a mains plug adapter for the end of that, which we've got the UK version, which will then plug that into a European adapter yeah. on the end of that. So it might just be a good idea to buy the European mains adapter for the end of that. Yeah. But we get by and like I said, we don't pull a lot of power anyway. We're not running heating or anything off it. So it's just a laptop. Next on our list are these bad boys. LED lights on copper wire, and they're powered by a USB. So we plug them into our battery banks and they draw very little power so they can be on all night without draining our little batteries. And um, they make the van feel really cozy and create a lovely warm atmosphere. They come with a little remote that has eight different settings. I find eight is just on yeah that's right this little remote has survived being dropped in a cup of tea so it's quite uh, sturdy stuff what we've done in the harder to see areas such as under the bed in our water container cupboard and in our clothes cupboard is install self-adhesive led strips along with a motion sensored control unit so underneath the bed we've got a couple of strips when you open the door and place your arm in to grab something out then the motion sensor will detect that and trigger the lights to come on They've got an internal battery, which will last for quite a few weeks, really, depending on which location they are. Obviously, under the bed is more used than, say, the water container cupboard, but the internal battery will last a long time and can be charged easily via USB, and you can turn them off, and you can change how long the lights come on for. So if you want just a short burst, because you know you're going to be in and out of that cupboard, then you set it to short. But it works really quite well. And with them being self-adhesive, you can place them in a lot of different places, and they haven't budged, which has been really quite useful. As much as we hate to admit it, our phones can be a lifeline in entertainment, uh, navigation. Uh, translation. Translation. So Meg said the first one we primarily use them for is camping. So we use the Park for Night app um, as our main resource for finding out free places to stay, paid places, showers, um, where we can get water, to top up toilets, stuff like that. It's an invaluable resource, which is only getting better. Yeah as more people use it. Mm -hmm. uh, there are also two more that we have downloaded but don't use quite as much, which is Search for Sites and Camper Contact. We've kind of just gone across to uh, Park for Night now because it's, it's very easy to use. It translates, um, so if someone's left a review or a description of a place and it's in French or German, the app will automatically do its best translating. It does a pretty good job. You can yeah. usually get the gist of what they're trying to say. 
Uh, with reviews and pictures, you kind of know what to expect when you get there instead of it being yeah. a bit of a shock. Next up is our entertainment source, which is Audible. Um, we'd love to get a sponsor, but this isn't a sponsor because we actually do use it. Yeah, we've listened to well over 100 hours worth. Alongside the Audible app, we also use uh, Netflix and YouTube on our phones a lot. And because of the SIM card I have, uh, it doesn't use any of our data, which is brilliant, but also detrimental because we get distracted. Uh, we've also downloaded the Google Translate app. Also, you can either type in what you want, uh, translate text, or you can take a picture um, of text and it will translate on the phone and do a pretty good job. Yeah, we use that when we have to use laundry services, parking machines, mm -hmm campsite which only explains how to use them in French or German and we are thankful to have it. Next up I've downloaded just to make sure that we don't get any fines is the Green Zone EU app. This tells us where the green zones are if we're driving into one. You have to research it, it doesn't like flag it up automatically. Um, so taking a glance at that you can insert in your vehicle's details what stickers that you've got which we've got the French and German, which allows us to drive into most city centres. So thank you very much for watching the video. We hope you found it useful. Everything that we've mentioned, we have bought ourselves and used and would definitely replace if we ever broke them or lost them. So as we mentioned at the start of the video, there should be a link down below for you to follow to our Amazon storefront. We've also got a blog and a webpage at www.campcomforts.co.uk and we're always on the social medias, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. All links for those are down below as well as an email, anything you can think of, it's all there. Don't forget to subscribe here on YouTube, we're currently travelling and producing all kinds of video content as well, vlogs, helpful tips, etc, budget, whatever you can think of, it's all here. And press that bell button to get notified of all of our new videos. Yeah, we've got plenty more in the pipeline, so hopefully you decide to subscribe and follow the journey. But once again, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.